Hey there hunters, Kai Sway Fang, pack leader of Scourge Alliance here, and today I wanted to share with you guys my Werewolf Maelstrom Arena build. Uh, this is particularly used in the veteran Maelstrom Arena, and as they've upgraded Maelstrom Arena weapons to have a perfected version, some of you may be revisiting there. And when you do, maybe you want to try something different. Maybe you want to try to complete it as a werewolf, or if you've done it before, maybe you want to try a different setup. So let me go over what I use. I'm using the Mighty Chudin helmet, and I'm using the Vicious Ophidian set. That's a great set in Maelstrom Arena because it's going to increase your damage done to monsters by 5%. It's going to give you some extra crit and some weapon damage, and it's going to be a really good sustain set for you. The set is going to give you a little over 2,000 stamina back every time you kill an enemy. And it's also going to give you great mobility while in the arena. Werewolves already have 30% increased movement speed, but having the ability to have almost 100% uptime when you're slaying mobs of uh, Major Expedition is great. Maelstrom Arena has a lot of mechanics in it where you need to get out of certain areas or get to certain areas quickly, uh, or the sooner you can get to your next mob, uh, the sooner you can kill them, the sooner you can get to the next stage. So. In my opinion, it's a really good set for Maelstrom Arena, and I also like using Blood Moon here still. Uh, you could use other sets. The one thing I like about Blood Moon, though, is you can kind of time when and where you're going to use it on. Uh, it's, it's a Since you don't have a burst ultimate, having that Blood Moon proc uh, spikes your damage really good, so if you're going up against certain targets in Maelstrom Arena that you need to burn down quick, you can kind of play that Blood Moon proc around then to burn those targets down really fast. The other great thing about it is um, it's it's a sustain set. I mean, it, it gives you no recovery or extra stamina or anything, but if you think about it, all, all you're doing during that uh, Blood Moon proc, during that Frenzy stage, is light attacking. So that's saving you saving you stamina. So you can use that stamina for abilities later after Blood Moon proc, or you can use that for roll dodging or movement and placement. So in my opinion, it's a really good set for the Maelstrom Arena. You can use double dot poisons there, that works. And for weapon, we have a precise weapon. Everything there is divines. And I do have two heavy on, just to give you a little bit more tankiness and get you up to that armor and spell resistance cap. So, you're going to be really tanky, you're going to do good damage. Uh, it's going to allow you to make some mistakes in uh, Maelstrom Arena, because we all know that RNG is a beast in Maelstrom Arena, and sometimes having some loaded dice does help. So, on a regular mob, I'm doing about 8k penetration. But, if we are using Deafening Roar, that's going to give you an extra 5,280. And as far as penetration needed in Maelstrom Arena, it kind of bounces all over the place stage to stage. Uh, some stages you need 9k penetration, some stages you need 12k, and some stages you need 18k. So I kind of went with the, the median there, so we'll be effective in... in basically all the arenas and and the arenas that we are needing to have less penetration we probably won't lead in with um, the deafening roar on our targets as far as regular CP setup you can take a look at it right there in some gear I am using that multi effect on it give us a little bit more health. Jewelry, we have the Bloodthirsty. And weapon damage. For food, we are using the Sugar Skulls. Because that's going to be giving you max stats across the board. And since you have really good sustain with these other sets that we're using, uh, we don't really need a very high stamina recovery. I'm going to be staying in werewolf form this entire time, so as you um, 
you watch and, and you're thinking about what happens when you drop out of form, just make sure you have something set up for your werewolf uh, in human form that they can perform well, whether you need more survivability with like a sword and board or if you need uh, extra damage uh, or a back bar regular rotation, make sure you have a, a bow on your back bar or whatever, however you like to PvE normally. Just be ready because you may drop out of werewolf form. As far as morphs, I'm going to be using the Berserker for that bleed damage. If you ran Pack Leader instead, you'd be losing out about 14% of your damage. Uh, but if you're first comer to Maelstrom Arena and you need a little bit more cushion, go with the Pack Leader. Not only is it going to help you stay in form longer because of what they've done with the Call of the Pack, if they fix it, currently is bugged on PTS, but the Call of the Pack... If you're a pack leader, it's going to let you stay in form 60%, uh, essentially 60% longer than, than usual. Your timer decays at 60% less rate, so it's nice uh, when you're in combat, you won't have to worry about your timer at all as a pack leader when they get it working. But for me, I'm just going to be using Feral Pounce. Brutal Pounce in the arena uh, It's nice, it gives you that extra weapon damage. But as far as keeping that up in between phases, since the, the portal phases, you're going to see it dropping a lot. And since we are using the Berserker, I don't I don't want to have to stop to, to eat things all the time. Because if you run Berserker and Brutal Pounce, then you only have your, your Blood Rage going off. And potentially you will have issues on certain, certain stages where when you're waiting on portals and you're you're waiting on certain mechanics or you're running from ice pad to ice pad you're not doing any damage and you may run into the chance of running out of form so I'm just going to completely negate that ever happening um, and just run Feral Pounce. Uh, Hercene's Rage we're going to use that as a damage boost uh, before portals open to take down the enemies quicker when we're not taking damage. Deafening Roar it's great, gives you the off balance, it gives you the minor maim and major fracture, so it's going to give you a da uh, good damage boost too. I'm currently using Howl of Despair. Howl of Agony is just not working for me on PTS. It doesn't matter where I'm staying or standing. Uh, it's just not giving me the bonus damage, so I'm just going to be using Howl of Despair. Regularly, uh, if they de if they get it working right, and I can get it working right on PTS, then I would use Hall of Agony instead for that extra damage boost because I don't have anyone to synergize my Hall of Agonies or my Hall of Despairs here on a Maelstrom Arena, so it doesn't make much sense. So when they get that fixed, Hall of Agony right there. Claws of Life is the PvE morph, so use that. That's primarily where a lot of your healing is going to come from. Uh, especially when you have multiple targets up, it's great because you slap it on all of them and you start getting some health back. Alright, I hope that covered basically the loadout there. Uh, if you guys have any questions down below, feel free to ask. Otherwise, let's head into the arena. Your negate not only stops or your fear, not only takes away their armor, but it also is going to reduce the damage they're doing. So just keep that in mind, especially when there's multiple targets up, it's, it's nice to get that proc on those targets. And keep your eyes open for anything that's happening. Uh, as far as projectiles coming at you. And especially in that poison round with the archers, in the final round with the archers, if you're not watching for those bows being charged up, uh, they can hurt a lot and one-shot you as well. Take out those stranglers just because the, the snare they throw on you is bad. Remember, keep devouring. Every, every chance you get, devour, devour, devour. When you got that second of downtime, you don't want to be devouring while you're fighting.
especially when every second that an enemy is CC'd is a second that uh, they can't damage you. So we're gonna kind of back backwards onto the island here because we don't want to be caught out here in the middle of her uh, owl phase right there. Don't focus the boss too much here. Make sure you're killing some of these ads. You don't want to get overwhelmed. There you go. Get your nibbles in. These corpses will disappear pretty quickly if they're not the bosses. So just keep that in mind. Eat while you can. But make sure you save a couple there for that portal to appear in between rounds. I'd say the, the round that has the biggest issue with staying in moral form is the ice round. There's a lot of time where you're dancing in between uh, glaciers, so just keep that in mind. One thing to note with the uh, the pack leader, though, if you're using pack leader in Master Marina, is those dire wolves are really nice to have because uh, they may not be able to take aggro from from your enemies or whatever. But they can, uh... They can track stuff down. So, like, whenever these little Dwemer dudes come out, uh, you're, and you're not looking, they will kind of run off and go after them. So, it's a good indication of, okay, where's that last mob? And, uh... Kind of gets you pointed in the right direction, which is cool. Close to proccing that. When you're close to proccing that blood rage, that's a good time to use that uh, fear on your target uh, balance. got those big groups like this, that's when you want to be using those claws of life. Use that devourer as you see it. You see it come up there. Uh, random Dwemers that are not the boss. Bosses usually stay up at the end for you to devour. Alright, so this is one of the hardest phases, in my opinion, for the werewolf, just because of the snares and the ice and the chill. And the fact that you are only melee. 
So when you have these portals pop up on the other side, your only option is to either go where they are or try to pull them onto the portal. Or pull them back onto the ice fixture that you're on. So what I try to do is I try to jump towards anyone that's ranged and keep them on this foundation, otherwise... Uh, otherwise you're gonna have a hard time encountering them if they're in the ice. You gotta wade out into the ice and try to kill them and that's just extra damage you do not want to have coming in. So let's get over to their portal quick, go after the bow guy there. you're going to want to watch where the troll is coming to, because you're going to want to take them out. So if they pick another one that you're not on, you're going to have an issue. One thing I've noticed um, since the change here with the the pounces is it's it's gonna be a little annoying as you're gonna try to jump to a target and uh, your your pounce is on cooldown right like right there so then you're kind of out of luck and you just have to run to them so I really hope that they fix how that mechanic works I really hope it just pounces to the target instead of having to to wait till that proc cools down. Because if I would have uh, pounced to a target and I had my pounce on cooldown and I was waiting for a carnage proc and I wouldn't be able to use my pounce, it's going to be bad. Especially if you think you're going to be using it to pull yourself out of danger or something and you're sitting there spamming your, your carnage button and it's it's not going off right. So when you have mul multiple targets coming up, it's good to get that claws of life going on them. See how I kind of backed off to the back part of the uh, ice there? That, that made that caster come up the range without me having to go out there to chase it. So one thing that I said that I wish they would, they would do is they would make it so the feral pounce would pounce when they're at ra or the pounce would activate when they're at range, and then uh, what it would do guys. And then when the targets are no longer at range, uh, and you're up close with them, then it would let you use the carnage. So this phase right here is going to be a little bit hard. What you want to make sure you're doing is getting your Claws of Life in as many targets as you can because you're going to have a lot of range coming in. You 
need some of these guys that aren't. Get this guy. And you do want to end up over on that that portal over here, just because it's quicker transition between areas. And that's one that you can have issues with your timer on, so just be careful as you're jumping around. If you're not using the feral pounce, uh, you're going to have issues staying in form, so make sure you're eating your snacks when you can. And so here, you're going to have to pick up those grenades, so the best practice with that is to lure the little dudes next to I see that a lot, a lot of people complain about how werewolf works. And uh, the synergy issues. So you just kind of get the guy's attention, run by him, drag him over, and then it will rock on the pillar. That way you don't have to worry about trying to work the synergy, especially when there's so many sigils and uh, corpses around. So one really nice thing, if you're caught out of position, when those uh, scarab dudes come up, you can put a Claws of Life on them, uh, since there's so many of the targets, and you can get a crap ton of healing coming in too. So if you ever find yourself on the other side of the arena and the scarabs are coming after you, um, it may not necessarily be a bad thing, because... You have the ability to survive through a lot of that damage, so don't don't panic. Just get your claws of life on them. You can pounce to these guys. Um, don't light attack them because your bleed will end up killing them. And if they're out of position, then that's a synergy you gotta wait for, and targeting, and all that good stuff you just don't want to worry about. So, you can, I've just found you can pounce to them, and it's not gonna be enough to kill them. And you can just slap them into place. The sigils do disappear in between rounds, so you don't have to worry about that as much uh, when you're devouring. But just keep that in mind that they could pop up at any second if the corpse is still up. You may waste um, a sigil, especially if you're still using them. So here's a good example, right? I'm out of position. The scarabs are up. Put my claws of life on them. I got plenty of time here because you still damage them. See, I'm not really having too much issues with sustain.
All right, one of the worst phases for a werewolf, right? You got bow users using poison. You got poison everywhere. Um, you got mushrooms dealing out poison damage. It's, it's just not fun. So one of the things I would say is uh, use use your situational awareness. Situational awareness here is better than any other thing in the game at this level for a werewolf. You know, damage is whatever. Um, you can try to plow through everything, head forward, but if you're not paying attention here and you're not positioning yourself right, you could end up dying. If that guy would have smacked you in the back with his with his bow, you would have been dead. You you would just would have been gone. So position yourself, watch where the mushrooms are, and play around that. You gotta keep your head on a swivel for the priests, because if the priests pop up when you're eating a snack or a mushroom pops up behind your butt, you're gonna be screwed. So keep keep your freaking head on a swivel here. I swear to God, I, I've died for more random things in this area than anything else. Um, try to avoid the center of the map as uh, the further you are away from one of these portals, the less likely you are going to be able to save yourself if a mistake is made. You kind of want to prioritize those bow users as they pop up. for that tint on your screen is that visual cue. And not only do you have to worry about where you are uh, in relation to the mushrooms that are exploding, you gotta keep your eyes open for the ones that are still popping out of the ground, because that's gonna be your next issue. So whenever you see those priests going and, and popping those shrooms, keep your eyes open. Is just pretend like there's an AOE around those shrooms that you can never go by no matter what. If you get too close to one, it's going to proc. Um, but they do go off on their own and they will get activated by the priests. So if you just do not go around their AOE at all, and not risk anything or getting CC'd right next to one, uh, you'll probably be fine. But that gets a little little hairy if you got a bow user next to one that you're trying to trying to kill. I'd recommend pulling that bow user away. So there's a bunch of bow user or bow user pop up there. I'm gonna pull it back just away from that situation and put them kind of in the middle again. Check, check your butt before you go anywhere. So these are a lot of bad place mushrooms here, so I'm just gonna stay away from that the best I can and let these guys come to me. Back in the corner a little bit. I'm gonna wait, wait for those shrooms to pop before I try to go across the field. that they put down is horrible if those shrooms start popping. So pick your placement in the fight. But the f placement you are in is more important than anything else. There's a shrimp next to that. I'm going to pull them away from there. my bad. I shouldn't have bashed him there. Made a... Mistakes were made. Try to break free from that the best you can. 
you have huge range on this guy here, so use that to your advantage. Don't necessarily stay in his hitbox, because his hitbox is, uh, is bigger than yours, so you can use that as your advantage. Usually you can get some free DPS out of this guy. Okay, Mender's up. I'm gonna try to kill him. So usually you want to park yourself underneath one of the bubbles or right next to the one of the mages that he brings out and close enough under the bubble that, that you can still damage the boss while safely underneath the bubble and then as soon as that channel goes off you need to uh, hightail it and kill, the, kill that ad. Otherwise you're just going to be behind and you have to be amazing with your bashes, because if you go after a mender, like what I did there, and I accidentally killed the, uh, the mage, or bashed him, um, and things are off, you need to be right next to that boss. And if, if he starts his howl when you're away trying to kill a mender, that's not good. So this is one of the phases you're going to have issues with the changes with Brutal Pounce and, and Feral Pounce, is you may pounce over to a guy and start attacking him, and then realize that you have a mage over there that's doing a channel, and you may not be able to get to him because you didn't follow up with the carnage in order to pounce again. So just keep that in mind when you're, when you're in this stage, be mindful of your pounces. Nice and laggy, just the way you like it. You got enough health here uh, that you should not have any issues with getting hit by some heavy, heavy, heavy hits, and you should be able to recover pretty easy using your Claws of Life as, as your ability to... basically like your vigor, right? You want to keep your vigor up heal over time up. You don't want to have to play reactively. Fire mages here should be your priority, otherwise it can be really bad if they get one of their channel attacks going off on you. You can tell which ones are the channelers because they have that increased health bar. If you're far away from them, you can dodge and watch those attacks coming in. Here, I'll kill this guy. I'll do it on the next one. You can get some dodges off and then worry about closing the gap on him. This guy keeps pulling you to him, but like, where else do you want to be as a werewolf? So these stones, as you pounce from one another, just get that feral pounce on there. the casters that come up here. If we 
can get him to spawn. Alright, never mind. Uh, but in this, if you're having issues and ads are popping up, you gotta keep the ads down. Uh, otherwise, there's just gonna be too much going on. The boss will CC you or hit you with a heavy attack, and then your fire mages are putting out really bad damage. That's where you can get in trouble. So just work those those stones down as quick as possible and work on killing the boss. I would say the the biggest biggest issue for werewolf here on this phase is bows. Uh, it's it's really hard to see them, uh, and if they get their charged bow attack off without you noticing, uh, it's gonna ruin it's gonna ruin a run. It's gonna ruin a flawless run. Uh, it's the little things. You just gotta keep looking out for it. Uh, Freaking ceremonial guards here. I mean, they're laughable to werewolf. Look, he's dead. Bye. Didn't even need a blood moon, really, to kill that guy. Get your snacks in. Keep your snacks going. Kill the bow guys first. You got really good mobility, so you should have no issues picking up. Any of those golden ghosts. Let's go ahead and just pop this. A bad thing with Werewolf, with that ceremonial guard or whatever that thing is called, um, sorry, the, the ghost that pops up and you can synergize it. You can't, you can't devour, you can't devour at all when you're using that. Uh, in my opinion, they, they shouldn't even have the howl or the. Uh, Devour as a synergy function. That should be your crouch. Like, if you crouch next to an enemy, quote unquote crouch, like you should devour. So crouch does nothing in werewolf form. You can't do it. It's a wasted, wasted button. And then it, then it just be becomes another thing that you try to synergize as a werewolf. And you know. You can't can't use a Nova in time, or you can't use a Sigil in time because there's a corp next to it. Uh, one of the big things I've noticed is is you can't um, you have issues resing people with the Devourer because you have to you have to devour a corpse before you can res somebody. So if you got a bunch of people dead around in PvP or even in Pv PVE in a dungeon, you're trying to get the res off like. You could have a bad time getting that devourer off. And that could that could cause a wipe if you can't get the tank up in time, or in PvP it could cause a total weight wipe if, if you can't get your healer back up. So they just need to move that because it, it it doesn't act as a proper proper synergy. Like if you use it, if you use Devour, which is obviously on the synergy button, uh, it doesn't give you being anything back from Undaunted. You know when you activate a synergy, it doesn't give you extra weapon damage or spell damage, or sorry, uh, extra stamina or anything. So yeah, where's that bow? I'm just gonna hold on to this for a little while. I may have to use my feral pounce.
See, there's a bow. Kill him! This little sneaky guy hiding behind the fucker. Jeepers. So this is another... Where you're just gonna have issues with that pounce, because usually I like to jump in between these to activate that. Just kind of put my dots on them and kind of hop around. There you go. Good run. Perfected Inferno Staff. Some people are going to be pissed about that. Some people will be very pissed about that. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you saw that uh, Werewolf is, is pretty freaking viable for um, Maelstrom Arena. Uh, the one issue with like trying to go for leaderboard scores or anything like that is you really don't have uh, AOE dot or AOE effects that you can place down on top of portals that can start killing the enemies before they even come out or you know prioritizing your targets. You gotta go basically one target to the next target to the next target and that's gonna cost you some time no matter how much damage you're doing. I don't think you're ever gonna be top top of the boards but uh, a lot of the classes, you can hold the, the top leaderboard score. I think um, my Templar has one of the top leaderboard scores. He's in the top 100 from Worldfront. So it's doable. Um, it's obviously completable. I, mean, I don't know. I had fun doing it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed and learned a little something and can use this setup in, in your next Maelstrom Arena. You can always push for more damage on this build. You can drop Chudin. You can throw on something else. You can throw on a damage set. You can throw on Graw. You can throw on a whole bunch of different things. Um, but, until next time, hunt well.